Blog Talk Radio. just tuning in uh you're live right here on indie fire with your girl uh nikia all right so very quickly i'm gonna just get this out there again for like the hundredth time i know people be like this bitch be lying but no for real for real all right so i'm putting this out there um if i've talked to you in the past about an intro track or intro music i'm um, this this message is for you i don't want to talk to you um so anyone else you know, if you're interested in um, doing the intro music for the show, please get at me, like, ASAP, like, tonight, like, tomorrow, so that when we come back on Tuesday, fresh for the month of July, we got new intro music. And I, I haven't been really, you know, worried about the music simply because I wanted to wait until July. Um, this is going into our third season. Um, the 17th of July will be our third-year anniversary for this show. 
going into the third season. So I wanted to wait, you know, until the month of July for this fresh music. Well, July is coming up on Monday. So that means I need music like Monday, all right? Like two Mondays ago, but I'm saying I need music on Monday. So if you're listening, if you come back and listen, you hear this message, uh, get at me personally. Uh, my assistant is uh, in the hospital and has been there for um, almost a month now. A very, very, very complicated um, pregnancy. And so I am, I'm literally doing everything right now, everything. And so um, get at me personally because I can't maintain multiple, my personal multiple email addresses as in um, the show's multiple email addresses. So you can contact me at um, Girl in Motion, G-R-L-M-M-O-T-I-O-N at Indie fire radio.com all right let me know that you're interested i'll send you the music and we can go from there all right uh again if you're just tuning in you're live right here on indie fire with your girl nikia i don't really want to talk about too much that's been going on lately because i got a lot of personal things that i want to talk about really quickly um, because we got a, a special special guest here with me tonight all right so first and foremost if you follow me on social media you know that i, I traveled late late um what is today? Thursday? So Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, to be able to be with my mother yesterday as she celebrated her retirement dinner. And um, she's been with Coca Cola, uh, based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and Charlotte, North Carolina, for the past 40 years. All right, so um, that's all my life, minus a couple of years. But Coke is all I know. And so to be able to just be at this dinner yesterday and, and hear people speak so positively. I mean, not that I know that, you know, they wouldn't speak any other way, but just the accolades that were poured out, you know, from people who were with her from day one, um, people that have been with her for like the past 20 years or the past 30 years, you know, people who remember me, because, um, you know, like I said, I've been there since day one. Um, it was just, it was an amazing experience, really. I don't think I've ever been to anybody's retirement dinner that was just that monumental. Um, we talked last year. Back in October, my mother went to Nicaragua for for Coke on a mission trip, where she leaves on the 27th of July for another mission trip. And then from there, you know, like the next month is like South Africa and the next month is someplace else because she's going to be in her community more now. And that was something that every all, all of her employees, you know, those that worked under her, um, her mentees, you know what I'm saying, like her boss, all of those people recognize, you know, the God-fearing woman that she was and then what she's you know, the next phase in her life and how she's going to impact communities, you know, um, worldwide. And so that right there got me excited. Like, I always thought my mother would die with Coke, you know what I mean? Because she's been there forever, and she never talked about retirement. And last month, she was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm headed to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, to announce my retirement, and they're going to give me my 40-year plaque and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wait a minute. Because she said it so fast, and I'm thinking, wait, what is she talking about retirement, you know? So... Uh, 40 years, and I believe it's seven months. On Monday, that'll be her last day. She started with Coke February 1st, 1979. So, Mommy, I salute you. Uh, my mother's actually, actually, she made it back to my house uh, because I have two kids that are, are leaving this week for California. My oldest, as you know, is military, and he's preparing for a deployment in October. Prior to that, they have um, some training, you know, California and um, Texas. But they, you know, got to go do some additional training. And so he was supposed to leave on Monday. And then he was supposed to leave on Wednesday. And then he was supposed to leave on today. And he gets there today and they're like, nah, we leave it on, you know, Saturday. So um, he'll be at, let me see, Fort Irwin in California. My daughter leaves Saturday morning as well, um, going to Anaheim, California, for a national competition. Um, you all know she graduated last month, but her, her, her team won their state competitions in Atlanta back in March. And so they now have to go compete. Um, and I think half the team is they, they're, you know, they've graduated, but they still have to go compete and represent the school in Anaheim. So they leave early, early, like 4 o'clock um, Saturday morning. And so just a lot going on. Like I'm really proud of all my kids and all they're accomplishing. Um, even the two that I don't talk about, because, you know, they do their stuff low-key, they're more academic, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm so just proud of all of them. And somebody mentioned to me today, you know, kids, you know, they they expect the world out of you and, and they, they worry you and, you know, da 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 And I said, you know, I don't know how your kids are, um, but 
it's moments like this right here that make me feel the most accomplished that I know for a fact, you know, um, that I did that. You know what I mean? So um, I'm proud. I'm just proud of all of them, proud of all of them. Very quickly, because this will be the last time we talk about it until next year, it is African American Music Appreciation Month. Again, it is the annual celebration of African American music in the United States. It was initiated as Black Music Month by President Jimmy Carter, who on June 7, 1979, decreed that June would be the month of Black music. In 2009, the commemoration was given its current name by President Barack Obama. In his 2016 proclamation, Obama noted that African-American music and musicians have helped the country to dance, to express our faith through song, to march against injustice, and to defend our country's enduring promise of freedom and opportunity for all. So throughout the month of June, every day we spotlight a different um, musician or musical contribution. And uh, today, I think we started out with the father of gospel. So today on the 27th, we backtrack a little bit and we spotlighted Kirk Franklin. Everybody knows who Kirk Franklin is, but for those who, of you who may not know, um, Kirk Dwayne Franklin is an American gospel musician, a songwriter, a choir director, and an author. Um, he is known for leading urban contemporary gospel choirs such as The Family, God's Property, and One Nation Crew, and has won multiple awards, including 13 Grammy Awards, um, and Variety has dubbed Franklin as a reigning king of urban gospel. Yes, so Kirk Franklin, we here at Indie Fire, we salute you. Now, I want to I backtrack just a little bit because I, I was talking about the new intro music and didn't introduce you to that artist. That was Miss Jana Blackwell on C-Town Records, Mistress of Soul with Dance All Night. That's her latest track. It's being played worldwide. All right, so don't sleep on Jana Blackwell and Dance All Night. Now, I mentioned we have a very special, special guest. Now, all of my guests are special on the show, all of them. And I always say at the end of the show, beginning of the show, somewhere during the show, once you're on the show, you're family. You're welcome back at any time, all right? So when you come back a second time, then you're extra, extra special, all right? So I'm super excited tonight because, uh, you know, back to, I think it was last Saturday in December, Indy Fire held their first annual um, music award show. I think that's what we called it. Um, And our guest tonight actually was nominated for Best Female Hip Hop Song. And she won also. So she won for Clocking Me. And I'm talking about uh, Shanice Rachel, Philly MC and model. Um, She's an upcoming artist. I don't know why she keeps saying upcoming. I felt like she's go further, of course, but upcoming isn't the word. Upcoming is no longer the word. Um, she, she's, I feel she's phenomenal. She's doing a lot um, behind and for her brand. Um, so rising, rising, maybe rising artist. We replace that word with rising, all right? She's a rising artist from Philly. Her music and style is one of a kind, and it's in its own lane, as you're going to hear later on in the show. I listen to her music on all streaming platforms. Shanice Rachel just released a new track entitled Call Me Treasure. I don't know if you've listened to it, but you're going to hear it. But I want you to listen to the the lyrics, as you should be doing with everybody's music. You know, listen to the lyrics of of this track. Um, It's also available on all music platforms as well. This is one of the tracks from her upcoming project, Pretty Dangerous Mixtape, that's due to be released in the earlier part of January 2020. That didn't sound right. 2020 is 2020? Hmm. I don't know. All right, so Google <laughs> Google her to get to know all about her and keep up with her latest work. Her music always leaves you wanting more. A lot of people say that about their music, but it's not necessarily true. This is one of those artists where at the end of the track, you're like, wait, it's over? Yes, her music does leave you wanting more. And make sure that when you talk about her, um, as you're following her, that you're hashtagging Shanice Rachel as well. So Indie Fire listening audience, fans, and followers, I present to you this evening my special, special 
guest, Shanice Rachel. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. You know What's what? What's going I mean, on? Like, I need somebody that's going to sit. I don't need you to do anything but just sit with me during the show. And once I say the guest names and you hit the button, it goes, woo Applause. Because I'm sitting here waiting for the applause and keep forgetting that I'm the one who has to hit the button. <laughs> That's, that, yeah, that's, I got to do better. All right, so I'm going to try this one more time. All right, so any fire listening audience, fans, followers, I present to you this evening our special, special guest, Denise Rachel. Woo! Bruh, I hit the button, and it, it, you know what? Woo! It'll pop up later on. They'll be like, woo, in the middle of the episode. Woo! It's all good. It's all good. How you been? I'm good. Just working, grinding, getting ready to drop some fire. Just drop some fire. Taking care of family. You know the norm. <laughs> now, it's, it's, how are you? I don't remember. I don't remember when you were here before. I want to say it might have been around this time, maybe July, August of last yep, year. Um, yep. But I didn't. I knew of you. I knew of you, the mm-hmm. artist. And then mm-hmm. once you have someone on the show and they become family, you know, and you, you follow them more on social media and you interact with them more on social media, and you actually feel like you are a part of their family because you, you see what's going on in their day-to-day lives. Right. You know what I mean? You see what's going on with right. their children. And so now I really, really feel like I know you, you know, better than before. <laughs> and, and I want to back up because I have worse memory. So I don't remember if you were actually on the show or if you were standby um, for the show during the time when Donovan passed away, I know Monica sought many different individuals to host for me or co-host for me um, while I was out, you know, dealing with his, his passion. Um, so thank you. I don't know if, if, if I ever got the opportunity to say thank you for that. You're welcome. I not even thought about filling in. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of, of my course, heart. Of course. Anytime. Yes, that, that, meant, that meant a lot to me. Um, but for those anytime. who don't, those who don't, don't tell me any time now, because I, I have you up here on Tuesday, <laughs> interview on Tuesday, and I ain't all excited about. But um, <laughs> uh, for those who may not have gotten the opportunity to listen to the interview, you know, previously, um, tell them just a little bit about how you got started in the industry. Do you come from a musical background? Was it a passion of yours that you just decided I'm gonna you know, pursue, or how did you, just talk about how you got started. Um, It's always been a passion. Um, I grew up listening to music, making music. Music just was, like, always life. So it's like, why not make money from it, Um, of course, and just live in what you do. Um, I've been in, you know, little singing groups. I've been, I've worked with a few other artists. Um, Right now I'm signed to Art of King Records that is actually owned by my husband, uh, King Da Vinci. And um, right now we're just, you know, just trying to, we're we're, we're up off the ground, but we're trying to, like, blast off. And so um, it it, it started with family. It started from my personal experiences, and it's, like, continuing, and it's going to end with family and my personal experiences. It's just a passion of mine that's just, like, coming to life, and I just get to get creative with it and just express it to everyone. So it's a blessing. And that was something that I didn't know. I found that out in December that um, I got his music. No, 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 no. No, that January, I got his music for uh, the birthday show, and uh-huh. I started putting because like, I started putting stuff together like you know um, you could tell when somebody's invested in the artist, all right? Mm-hmm. They do a lot of promo, you know, um, but this person was doing like he did all your promo. He he praised you like his praise was different from how I praised my artist. You know what I mean? And I was just mm-hmm. like, you know what? Let me do some more research. Let me stalk some more pages and figure this shit out. And by the end of the show, I was like, "Damn, I got it! I got it!" But, and I asked my I was like, "Did you know? Did you know that you know that was a husband?" She was like, I, "Look, I get the stuff. I get the bio. She's not very music savvy. I get the bio. I put all that stuff in, and then that's that's it for me. Like, I don't I don't listen right. to the music. I don't you know." And I was like, "Yeah, like 
so from that point on, um, I don't think I'm ever, I don't think I've ever talked to him, but uh, I felt like the family got a little bigger, you know, because it right. wasn't just Artie King, it wasn't just Artie King anymore, and you, you know, it was him as well. And so, um, if you get the opportunity, he's on all music platforms as well, um, King Da Vinci. Make sure that you are following him, you're streaming his music, you're downloading the music, um, you're supporting him just as hard as you're supporting this artist right here. Who influences your style? Um, darn. And I'm not saying this just to say it. I don't think anybody influences my style. I think my style is just like me. It's like what's on the inside just like pours out. Like, <laughs> I just, I really, yeah, I, just me. I, I don't have anybody that really influences my style. Now, I have idols that, you know, I may look up to, like, I love Beyonce. I love Nikki. Um, you know, I, I, I it's a, quite a few people that I do like, but as far as like influencing my style, no one, just myself and God and whatever life throws at me. <laughs> and I think that's good. Um, mm-hmm. You have the opportunity to be uh, so much more original when you're not trying to mimic anybody else's style. Um, the the avenue for um, the artist to be original is so much more wider when it's just them. You're not closed into a box um, because you're trying to be like somebody else or, you know, you're trying to look like somebody else or, or you know, perform like somebody else. I think your avenue is a lot wider when you yourself, you be you, be original. Mm-hmm. Sit back and watch other people, you know, be the example that other people um look up to. I think I think that was best in this industry. Because right. really. there's so many copycats, you know what I mean? So many copycats yeah. in this industry. So when you can yeah. step out, especially as a woman, you know, when you can just step out and just be your own brand and it doesn't uh, follow anybody else's course, um, I think that, that is what's best in this industry. Yes, yeah. it stands out. Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Where do you, um, I know that we, we talked earlier this week and you had some some health issues, but how do you continue, and with the new track that's coming out last week, like how do you continue to stay motivated when you have so many other things that are weighing you down or pulling you in multiple different directions? How do you not become distracted and stay motivated? Um, well, yeah, um, I was in and out, out of the hospital, uh, for, I think the past month, just for a little injury. Um, I'm recovering. Um, I stay, m- music just always motivates me, of course, just like, you know, taking care of the family and everything. Um, I, 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 I'm not distracted because I'm so motivated. I know what I'm going for. Like every second, my eyes are open. Like, when I wake up, I know what I'm going for. When I go to sleep, I pray for what I'm going for. So since I know for what I'm going for, I know what the goal is. I know despite if I get sick, if it rains for 20 days, if whatever happens, I know what the ending goal is. So I I really can't get distracted. I don't have time, and it's just like my my eyes is just on the prize. (laughs) So... It's, it's kind of hard to get distracted, honestly, nowadays, and especially with, you know, projects coming up so soon. Um, I'm trying to build my fan base a little more, and, you know, by doing that and just focusing on the business behind the music, it's just you'll, you'll, you'll be crazy to even let anything or anyone distract you. So I'm, I'm just too focused right now, <laughs> way focused. It's, it's hard to, to distract me right now. So I want to talk about um, that. That every week I have a different guest on the show. You know, Tuesday, Thursday, and that is a question that, in some way, whether I twist it and just outright ask it, or you know, add lib one in a little bit, that is something that I ask um, every guest uh, because I find it hard. Like I, it, anything distracts me. And I don't know if it's because my hands are in so much um, that I, I can't stay focused, like, on one thing. Like, I got to be working on this right here. And 
10 minutes later, I got to jump over here and work on this right here. And then five minutes after that, I got to go jump on this right here. You know, I don't know if it's because my hands are in so many different um, things that I can't stay focused. But I, I, I commend, I commend the artists, um, the music artists, as well as those, um, the literary artists who, you know, can go get in a corner and write or, you know, can just close the door, tune the world out and get shit accomplished. I, I can't do that. So I'm taking notes. So if I seem a little distracted, I'm taking notes. You know, um, <laughs> because, and, and I know a lot of them say, you know, this is something that I'm passionate about. If you're not passionate about it, then I feel like it's easy for you to get distracted. But I'm so passionate about a thousand different things that, again, I'm, my mind is just, it's just, it's everywhere. So I'm, I'm taking right. notes, you know. I don't want you to think I'm, like, over here, like, is she ignoring me? No, I'm, I'm just <laughs> taking notes, like, physically, writing stuff down, taking notes, especially as they come to my head, like, yeah, right, you can incorporate that right there to be able to, you know, do what you need to do. So, yeah, that was that was good information right there. But I want to talk about your new track um, from, I'm going to just take it back to last year. Even though you've been doing music longer, I'm going to take it back to last year from when I first met you and from what I first heard. How has your music changed? How do you feel that your music has changed from last year, say from Clocking Me to Call Me Treasure? I've gotten, um, I started not giving, can we curse on the show? Girl, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I started not giving any fucks, and um, that's how <laughs> things have changed with me. Like, I don't care about standards. I don't care about if a song is about someone and they might think crazy of me. I, I, I just don't care. It's my craft. What I feel like is what I put out. And um, so my songs now are starting to show I'm a little bit more confident, and I'm showing that I don't truly give any fucks um so that's my that's how I transitioned from last year to this year and you'll hear it in my music especially call me treasure and I'm glad you said that because I feel like if if I heard you last year and you still sound the same way this year you're still talking about the same thing there's been no growth and if you can't grow mm-hmm. within this industry then I'm wondering what are you doing what you're doing for you know who mm-hmm. are you doing it for if there's no growth, and I most definitely can hear the growth from clocking me um, to call me treasure. And but I was listening to something early. We were coming back early, early this morning, like three o'clock this morning, and immediately for some reason, Apple Music always um, starts playing as soon as I get in my truck. Apple Music always starts playing. I don't care if I want to get on Spotify. Apple Music is always going to start playing. So you know the playlist is for. For Apple Music, it's in it's in alphabetical order, and mm-hmm. maybe like song number six, um, it was you. I can't even tell you the name of the song. Is it <laughs> checking me? Is it checking me? A uh, check? Maybe it's check. Girl, I don't know what it was, but I was just like, <laughs> and I know if it's in if it's in my playlist, it's because I use that as promo. Last year, right? Okay. So then oh, my, daughter was like, my daughter was like, oh, I like that. Who is that? Not like everybody's name and then, you know, shit don't pop up on the console. But she was like, yeah, but is that a is that a is that an independent artist? And I was like, yeah, but let me let you listen to her new music, right? So mm-hmm. after I play that, you know, my daughter's like, a, she's a music connoisseur. So if she don't like shit, she's going to let you know up front. I don't, I don't like that. Like, I have turned guests away. Because my daughter be like, nah, ma, you don't need to put that on the show. Like, for real. Oh, wow. Like, you trying right. to come up. You, you trying to come up and, and they send you back. You know what I mean? So, um, right. she heard Call Me Treasure, you know, she was like, oh, that's the same person? And I was like, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, you don't see the growth yourself. Now, other people don't see the growth in you. Then again, I have to ask, what are you doing this for? You can't stay stagnant mm-hmm. in this industry. You know? So, mm-hmm. you have to be able to um, feel the growth, see the growth. The listening audience has to be able to be the same, I feel, <laughs> in order for you to continue to be successful, you know? Yeah. I wanted to save that one for last, but since I'm talking about it now, uh, where did where did the title of the track come from? 
Um, the title came from when I made the song. Um, the song was made. Gosh, like I think I made the song probably like a year and a half ago. I just never released it. Um, and when I made the song, um, I was kind of like angry at the time. But um, when you hear the lyrics. It's like it's this woman, it's this girl, and it's just like so much hate and so much anger, you know, being, you know, beat within her. But the outsource of it is treasure, like diamonds form right under pressure. So despite all the pressure that life and people give you, it's like, no, a a diamond forms from this, you know, treasure forms from this. So everything that, you know, people give me, all this negative backlash and this negative energy, while you're doing that, just call me treasure because, you know, while you're you're doing that, all this pressure, diamonds and treasure is forming from it. And so it's just like, you know, call me treasure. (laughs) There you have it. Listen to the lyrics. I said this earlier. She said this. Listen to the lyrics so you don't grasp anything else um, from what she just said about the title. And then talking about, you know, coming through a rough spot. Like, like when diamonds are formed, their process of forming a diamond isn't, um, it's not a simple one. And everybody can't be, you can't shine bright like a diamond. Everybody can't do that. Um, there's a lot of storms that, an individual has to go through, I feel like, um, to come out shining and bright as a diamond. Um, and if you make it that far, you most definitely, I feel, like you consider the treasure. This is Call Me Treasure, the new state Or not, it might be, it's coming. Trust me. <laughs> Real shit, but they still hate me. Rolling with my niggas till I'm fucking late. Hey, these unintelligence don't save me. Nah, Trump president shit crazy. Uh, got to get my money up to get the Pluto. Pluto. Riding by myself, only roll with Uno. You know, of course I got my niggas stuck with you know. <laughs> and I'm the shit bitch fucking ego. With Mr. Shotgun, I was shooting free throws. Uh, need to change my scene, shit, fuck amigos. Ha. Fuck amigos. Ha. Pass the blunt, man, won't be true. They love, but they still hate me. Fucking haters trying to play me. Mama raised me, but she hates me. How these demons birth and babies. Diamonds form right under pressure. Mind is golden, call me treasure. Devil's voices getting clearer. Puffing loud so I can't hear ya. Da 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 Get this money, that's the fucking motto, money. Every day I'm living life just like I want a lotto. Yeah, hey, with me, that's the set of bitch, you fucking stupid. You love me or you hate me, if you smart, you call me Cupid. Ha, I'm dropping bombs on them body team. I got some shit boiling up the head, and junkies leaning. My kitty's real good, heady bitches, niggas leaving. My niggas real hood, bloody Mary got you bleeding. Ha, no time for these fake niggas. Nah, niggas out of line, we just cut triggers. Not a lot of time, gotta get this money. DMX vibe, what these bitches want from me? Show love, but they still hate me. Fucking haters trying to play me. Mama raised me, but she hates me. How these demons birth and babies. Diamonds form right under pressure. Mind is golden, call me treasure. Devil's voices getting clearer. Puffing loud so I can't hear ya. Da 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 I show love, but they still hate me. Fucking haters trying to play me. Mama raised me, but she hates me. How these demons birth and babies. Diamonds form right.
heart under pressure. Mind is golden, call me treasure. Devil's voice is getting clearer. Puffing loud so I can't hear ya. Da 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 it's your boy Jerusalem from the Scarfella Music Group, and you on the air with the hottest station, Andy Fire. Andy Fire. With your host, Lil Timmy and the Kia, right here, right on the here, station, right here, right here. all the hottest right hip hop right hits, Andy Fire. Andy Let's Fire. Get Let's get it. 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 let us get it let us get it let us get it let us Okay. Yeah. And what you just heard was her latest track. Was it just released on the twenty first, right? Yeah. Yep. So like last Friday, like last Friday, um, that was "Call Me Treasure." You know, when I first, I like to look at titles and decide if I'm going to listen to music or go see the movie or read the book. You know, by the by the the title. So I saw Call Me Treasure. Uh Uh-oh. Now, granted, I had already, you know, heard um, a little snippet from the promo, but I thought, um, Call Me Treasure, huh, this seems like it's going to be something about, you know, working in a strip club because me, (laughs) I just finished watching Pose for, like, the third time, right? And I binge watch it every time. And so, um my mind was just stuck on uh, dancing and, and stripping, even though they don't strip in that, but, you know, dancing and stripping. So I thought, oh, okay, so this chick, and plus I have had a lot of artists um, in the literary community on the show recently. And so in a lot of their books, you know, um, Urban Fiction and Erotica, and I, I, that was my mind. I was like, oh, all right, this is, we talking about this chick named Treasure. All right, so then when I heard it, I was like, oh, gosh. So I typically listen to a track three times. At first, I want to hear it. Secondly, I want to listen to um, all background sound, um, you know, everything that made up the beat. I need to hear all of that. Then the third time I listen, and I incorporate all of, you know, the lyrics. And that's how I determine if, you know, that's going to make a show or not. I don't, I don't like that. Or, you know, let me give this person some constructive criticism or, you know, and so when I, I listen to it, like, then there's some tracks that I get and I only have to listen to it once. And they just stick with me. And that's one of those. That's one of those right there. And again, as I mentioned, oh. and that's what I've been looking for, the the songs that I was talking about. But I heard, you know, I hear the growth um, from last year to now. So I can only imagine what's going to happen from this point on because, as you mentioned, you're working towards um, the final project due to be released January of next year. And so um, I feel like each, and I know, each track is going to get better and better and better till we get to the final culmination in January. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Idea. And it's, it's not the final project. It's just an nope. upcoming project. No, no, no. I was saying I have my eyes on the final prize, just overall, like, success and stuff-wise. But um, that, that that project, that's going to be one of many. Like, I got so much to do. That's just a mixtape. We haven't talked about my EP, my album. Like, I got a lot going on here. And so um, you did say prior to the show that the mixtape may incorporate features from other artists. Yes, um, for sure, too, right now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to leave it at that. I don't know if I'm going to add anyone, but it will um, have a couple of features from, from some artists, yes. And why the name Pretty Dangerous? Because it describes me. I'm so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it gets pretty dangerous if you cross me, you know, so mm-hmm. it's pretty dangerous. Um, and you know when I rap, like um, it, it can it can go all different types of styles. But one thing that people notice that they mention to me is like you're so pretty, but your bars are so vicious. I remember I right? had a radio right? interview. And I had a radio radio interview, and the guy told me you rap like you have a Sunni, and that like 
stuck with me. You know what a Sunni is, the the, the beard that Philly men wear. And yeah. I was like, that, that like really stuck with me. And I, I get that all the time. So I think the Pretty Dangerous, the name Pretty Dangerous mixtape just, it, it sticks with me. It's, it's, it's going to sell. And it fits the me and it fits the project mm-hmm. so perfectly. Very appropriate. So I, I pegged you. that one. I pegged that one correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Which ingredients do you um, feel makes you special and unique as an independent artist? Um, I think my lack of uh, not really paying attention to standards and just being so openly like free, like I, I, I some people consider me a hip hop hip hop artist, but I'm an artist overall, and that's I think that's what makes me special as an independent artist. Like, okay, your hair cold spot, but then your hair something like uh, you know, call me treasure. So my my vibe, my my moods of the music, like it all just depends on what I'm feeling in the booth that day. And I think that that just makes me very special because you never know what you get when you hear something from me. Even with the music video, you never know what you're going to see. You don't expect, you can't never expect something from me because it's always different. It's always evolved and I got so much to share. So I think that's what makes me, you know, uh, special as an independent artist. So you mentioned standards, and I know um, when I have female artists on the show, um, typically they, they're they trying to stay in their lane, but then they have people that significantly influence every aspect of uh, their brand. What's the biggest barrier that you have had to face as a female independent artist in this industry? Um. The team that I work with is awesome. Um, it comes with a lot of, you know, ideas and constructive criticism. And um, where I may uh, get held up sometimes with that is everyone not following the, the guideline of not listening to standards. So it's like I have a team, like one person uh, does my makeup and hair all the time. Someone does my beat. Someone uh, does my, I mean, not my choreography, they write the video out sometimes if I don't do it. Um, But when it's so many different ideas, it's like you may want this one thing, but they want another due to standards or what they see. So the biggest thing that, you know, uh, the the holdup that I have is just like when I ask somebody to the team, really trying to get them to see my vision so we can win. Because you hear my music and you see these videos and you see pictures, but it's a whole team behind it. And, um... You know that that that's that's the part where it, it gets a little tricky, but it's, it's you always win in the end when it's done right. So you don't have a problem. I know there are artists who do have issues with um, staying in the ground, speaking up and saying, you know, this is not what I have. This is not the idea that I have for my look. This is not the idea that I have for this video. This is most definitely not, you know how I envision this song um, being written. Do you have an issue um, with telling people it's not what I'm Not at all. Not at all, because it's my song, it's my vision. So I have no, if it doesn't come out the way I see it, I'm not going to like it. So if I don't like it, I can't get other people to like it. So I have no problem telling anybody, no, that's not what I wanted. That also goes hand in hand with say letting your family listen to your music, and I feel like your family's going to support you and and always imaginable. Um, they're not going to be the ones to tell you that your shit is really garbage. Um, so I feel that that goes hand in hand. Like you need you need to be able to um, lay down the ground rules and, and say, hey, this is what I want. Um, but then when it comes back and people are listening to your music, then you also need to be able to remember that. You know, um, there has to be, like, a midway point, I feel. Like, um, these people that aren't your friends and that aren't your family, that can make up the fan base for you. That's your listening audience. And these people Mm -hmm. that are more constructive, you know what I'm saying, they're more constructive, they can be that that midway point, I feel, between your your personal, um, you know, conception of what you had 
the ideas that you had, the look that you had, um, and then you have these non-judgmental people that can say, you know, hey, um, I don't like that. You know, let's maybe you could change this. I, I'm learning. I'm learning right. a lot. Doing a lot of beta reading right now for mm-hmm. authors, and I am a stickler for uh, misspelled words and run-on sentences and commas placed in a wrong place. And, you know, so I thought maybe I don't need to do this because I don't want to, um, like, burn any bridges with these with these artists, you know. I don't know what they're used to dealing with, but I feel like, you know, I maybe I should not be the one doing this. But in the same essence, you have artists that you, you do this for, musical artists that you do this for daily. You know what I mean? You critique their music. So you're doing the same thing. And I feel like it's only going to better what um, the author or what the artist actually had in mind for their um, their project. It's only going to better them when you're able to give them the constructive criticism that they need. So mm-hmm. I think the two kind of go hand in hand. But a lot of, I ran across a lot of artists that, you know, well, I wrote the track, but this was a beat. And I didn't feel like they really went together, but you know, management said do this, or, you know, I got styled this way for this video, but it really wasn't the look that I was going for, and they don't want to speak up and say anything for fear of hurting somebody's feelings, but again, this is this is your brand, this is what you're working, you know, hard to to um, make things come to fruition, you can't sit back and let other people hold you down, because, you know, you may have people on your team that really aren't there the way that they should be there, you know? So mm-hmm. I just said all that, you know, I just, y'all know, I'm, you could tell when I start drinking, right, guys, because I start just talking and rambling and stuff. So I'm going to pull it back in. I'm going to pull it back in. Um, <laughs> talking, about, talking about the mainstream artists, um, say Nikki, um, Remy Ma, what are those girls? Young Miami, uh, Cardi B. When you hear their music or when you, um, see their videos, and knowing that you're trying to not um, emulate anything that anybody else does, um, do you think that hurts you, or is it beneficial to you? Um, neither, because um, when I look at other artists' music, especially the females, I'm a fan as well. Like, I look when I look at their videos, I'm looking at it from a fan you know, point of view. I'm like, oh, that was hot, or oh, she could have done this better, or oh, I, I never, it doesn't benefit me or hurt me at all because I never look at it from, like, an artist point of view when I look at those, um, you know, videos because I'm a fan. So um, people go platinum that you never hear of ever, and it's just like, I'm sorry, my husband is right here trying to tell me something. Matter of fact, come on real quick. <laughs> <laughs> we will go. What, what did you want to say? No, I was just saying how. Hello, how are you today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm doing real good. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Um, no, I, was, I just heard. It was listen, I was just listening in, and um, I was just saying, you know, was that you know the thing about the game is the game is bigger than you know everything that we see on TV all the time. See some there are artists right now that you never that you have not heard of yet that actually probably just went platinum yesterday. I just got a new Spotify mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. a board or something. So and the thing and the, and the thing about it is they're running their own lanes because it's not really right. about uh, too much imitation. It's about what can right. you create as a product as a brand and can you push it. Period. And so, yeah, I guess that just I just felt like I wanted to. He had to put his two cents in. in. (laughs) All right, bye bye, bye bye, husband. (laughs) Nothing, yes, nothing completely wrong. Nothing wrong with that at all. And I completely agree um, with with what he said, especially those in the I guess what we still call the underground um, community. Like I remember listening to SZA like six, seven years ago. And I thought then she was um, amazing. Her vocals were amazing. Her content, um, her creativeness, everything was amazing. And then, bam, she came out, and I didn't like her no more. Not because um, 
I felt like I felt she became so commercialized, like she didn't have any say in what uh, he was putting out. You know, when she right. was on the low, even um, you know, even then, she like everything was just unique about her, and it just seems like now there's another path that she's following. Um, so I completely understand what he, he's talking about. Um, talking about then, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just part of the game. And then one thing that um, I was taught is just like the smoke and mirrors aspect. And um, I just always try to look at it from both sides of the mirror. And um, that's just part of the game. And it's basically the business behind it. And the business behind it will make you or break you. But the business mm-hmm. behind it has to the business behind it has to incorporate you as well. If you have someone else, you know, just I, and I don't want to go too much into it because people actually do that, especially mainstream artists. But that's just not the thing for me. Like I, I always need to have say I'm on my Beyonce type time. Like I'm my own management, all that good stuff. Like, <laughs> and it just works out for me. And just just going back to the business aspect. Um, I have a lot of artists on the show who they don't know anything. Somebody else is running everything for them. I think it is important that as an artist that you know the industry, right? Not names in the industry, not, you know, mainstream names or or titles. You need to know the industry itself. You need to know the Mm -hmm. business side of the industry to make sure that everything that you're you're putting forth, you're going to get that double in return. Whether it's monetary, you know, um, whether it's the accolades, um, you you just need to make sure that you know the business side of it, um, so that you can ensure that your brand is being handled correctly. Don't turn it over yeah. to somebody else and expect Jim to just do everything for your brand. You need to be able to. Um, if that person walked away tomorrow, I got it. Right. I can do it. You know what I mean? Right. So make sure that you're learning everything. You know, you need to be sponges and soak up every. Thing. And this industry changes. It used to change daily. Every mm-hmm. hour, there's something. That, like, I, my phones go off um, every 20, 30 minutes. Something new has occurred in this industry. And so, music, um, people's desire for your type of music, um, the, all of that, it changes. You know, so you need to be business minded and 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 business savvy when it comes to your career in this industry or your brand. My, yes. my personal consent. Uh, I want to jump into the next track, which is Check. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Um, yeah, Check. Um, the beat, I went to the studio, Art of King Beats, uh, produced the beat. I went in the studio, heard the beat. I was like, whoa, like, let me just add some tracks to it. And literally, I just, like, really freestyled that like I started feeling it after the words started coming along but that was literally freestyle <laughs> so it's not too much I can say about the track but it's a banger <laughs> I'm not gonna put you on the spot you know everybody who mentions that they freestyle they gotta spit a little bit I'm not gonna put you on the spot though next time the next, next time, time. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just tuning in you're live right here on Indie with our uh, special Special guest tonight is Denise Rachel, and this right here is Jack. I can't be your plastic Barbie. I'm too fucking real, I'm sorry. Passion fruit in this Bacardi Bad girls don't let me get naughty Real chick, real hair, real nails, real ass What the fuck's a long stroke if you gon' come fast? Better get your cup, cause it's juicy, nigga Quick to please your mind like a Lucy, nigga I can only be authentic, so don't get it twisted This plane is taking off your flight, you bout to miss it These lanes is on my radar, you can get listed Got this money on my mind, magic like a wizard 
Gotta pay for the time, I ain't giving freebies And I ain't like these girls you see on your TV Gotta keep it real, I can only be me I can only be me Yeah, nail check, body on fleek, check While I'm sitting right, check Bottles on deck, check Models on deck, check Goonies to my left, check Loud in the air, check Tell them niggas cut that, check Hair, nail, check Body on fleek, check While I'm sitting right, check Bottles on deck, check Models on deck, check Goonies to my left, check Loud in the air, check Tell them niggas cut that, check I'm the realest, I'm the littest Bars on fleek, I'm on his tennis list If you with me, we can split this Against me, then you get dismissed Man, I stay on top my business Matter of fact, I am a business Tell these haters my damn business Just start buying from my business I'm supplying to my people Family, fuck fake amigos Extra hot, just like some Cheetos Your aura stink like Doritos Got me salty like some Fritos Sipping niggas like Tostitos I'm a winner, he a loser, nigga Thinking like the sewer ah. Hair, nail, check Body on fleek, check While I'm sitting right, check Bottles on deck, check Models on deck, check Goonies to my left, check Loud in the air, check Tell them niggas cut that, check Hair, nail, check Body on fleek, check While I'm sitting right, check Bottles on deck, check Models on deck, check Goonies to my left, check Loud in the air, check Tell them niggas cut that check I'm supplying to my people Family, fuck fake amigos Extra hot just like some Cheetos Your aura stink like Doritos Got me salty like some Fritos Dipping niggas like Tostitos I'm a winner, he a loser Niggas thinking like the sewer ah. Hair, nails Body on fleek While I'm sitting right Bottles on deck Models on deck Goonies to my left, loud in the air, tell them niggas cut that check, hair, nail, check, body on fleek, check, while I'm sitting right, check, bottles on deck, check, models on deck, check, goonies to my left, check, loud in the air, check, tell them niggas cut that check, hair, nail, check, body on fleek, check, while I'm sitting right, check, bottles on deck, check, Models on deck, check. Goonies to my left, check. Loud in the air, check. Tell them niggas cut that, check. Yeah. Whoops, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Uh, yeah, so I figured out the song that I was talking about. I knew Check was in both of the songs. All right, Check My Price, Check Your Price, Check. Yes, Check My Price, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I was listening to that one earlier this morning, and as I was saying, and I was, and my daughter heard it too, and then like I said, she heard Call Me Treasure and couldn't believe okay. that there was the same artist. And so, yeah, when, when other people can see your growth, um, then you got to be doing something right. But I, I think... I don't know. I, I love clocking me. I, I think Check may be my favorite song, maybe. Um, because you mentioned that it, it, it was a freestyle. Uh, I think when people have to write everything and make sure that everything is, you know, is coming out and out and um, it's so uniform, um, I, I don't like that. I think when it just comes straight off the dome. Mm-hmm. It's that's some banging more- tracks of May, I feel like. You know, yeah. that's, that's that fire really um, can escape. You can't get it back. Um, you just went in the studio and bam, it just happened. And I think that's when the yeah. room really shines through. Um, so especially for somebody who is following his path of such originality um, and not allowing any or everyone to box her in, um, that right there, I think that's that's my favorite so far. Thank you, well, thank you, man. Music that's coming, so I think that's my favorite so far. I'm with thank you. you. Now, this is from your your point of view. You're welcome. Which um, of your songs do you think that you have delivered on um, your best performance? 
um, from an emotional and a technical point of view, whether it was live or whether it was just the release of the song itself. Um, which is your favorite? Call Me Treasure, and I can't wait to really? start performing it. Yes, I can't wait to start performing it. I can't wait to, for you guys to see the visuals in the video. I can't wait for you guys to truly see the message behind the song. It's, it's a true story. It's my life. Like So, yeah, Call Me Treasure, hands down. Yeah, and, and then I have to remember, I said really, but then I have to remember um, the story into uh, and, and behind the title. So when yep. things are that personal, I feel like they're always going to be, you know, um, the, the book or the, the track or the performance that you can um, say that that solidifies me. You know, whether it's uh, in this phase you're in right now or you know, moving forward, but that is what solidifies me as the artist that I am, you know, when it's something that was right. personal and, and happened, you know, to you or maybe to your loved one, that, that I feel like it is uh, the best mm-hmm. for the artist. Uh, we're at the time of the show that I hate the most. Um, oh. That's saying goodbye. That is saying goodbye. Um, but I want to go ahead and, and give you the opportunity now to go ahead and get all of your social media contact information out for those who may be listening now or for those who may come back and listen to one of the various playback shows. Let me let me guys let me tell you guys something. Uh, if you're a manager, you have had to tell your artists at some point in their career. Um, nobody's going to support you more than you support yourself, right? And your downtime. Plug in your phone, you know, your device, and play the hell out of your music. You can do that for the mainstream artist, um, but you can also do that for yourself. So I said, you know, I, I used to tell my artists that all the time. Um, but now I'm going to do that to the show as well because the show is on so many platforms and it's being shared across mm-hmm. so many, you know, um, platforms. So <laughs> I started and I wanted to – make it consistent, but I have the memory of like a doorknob, so that, that didn't last long. But in three years, and I think I'm, I might have mentioned it to a few people, but in three years, um, we got our first check last month, right? And it was it was a really huge check, all right? So um, I, my mother just happened to ask me that today. She was like, so I thought she was done with this. Like, I thought she was quitting. Like, what happened with that? And I said, you know, mommy, things didn't work out the way that I wanted them to work out. You know, um, I'm not a quitter, for one. And for two, this is my passion. This is what I'm passionate mm-hmm. about. And and I got a first check last month, you know what I'm mean? saying? She was like, Congrats what? on that. I was like, yeah, I got the first check, you know. And But I wanted to say this, that it's never really been about um, the money. This show was never started for the money. This show piggybacked off of a a previous show. None of the shows were ever about the, the money. It's always been about providing um, an avenue of expression for all those in, in the independent community to be able to get, you know, their whatever it is, their brand out to a wider listening audience. And so when I saw the check, I was like, wow. Um, like, wow. You know, so now you can only go mm-hmm. up. Like, and I and I, I told my, my very first co-host, um, I sent him the picture, you know, of the check, and he was like, you know, I think he was more excited than I was, um, because again, it was never about, um, never about the money, um, but it was about, like I mentioned, what it was for. Um, but mm-hmm. I feel like consistency is key, and um. That would have been my last question for you as an independent artist. If someone may be listening to the show now or come back and listen to another show, a playback show, um, and they think, you know, oh, wow, um, you know, she's very talented. I, I like her sound. Um, I feel like everything that she talked about, like I'm doing that, but I'm kind of stuck. What piece of advice could you offer that individual to say, you know, hey, Da 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 is gonna push you a little bit further, or 
you know, don't do this right here um, to get to the next level here. And for me, I felt like consistency is key. Like you can't uh, think that overnight you, you're going to have to put in some work. You can't be the overnight success. I mean, it's possible, but uh, let's think logical. But what mm-hmm. piece of advice could you offer this artist and say, you know, hey, um, this is what I've done. This is what works for me. Hey, try it. What can you say to the artist? Um, consistency is key and it's a habit and, um, you have to live in what you do. So, um, to get to that higher level in your artistry, you literally have to live in what you do. Um, the best thing I can say is eat well, sleep well, just take, drink water, just take care of yourself, um, and get connected with you know, the energy and the consistency will then become key and it will become a habit. And it'll be something that's done all the time, like you waking up brushing your teeth. So um, just, you know, stay focused, take care of yourself, and consistency is key. That's good information right there. So now I'm going to give you the opportunity to go ahead and get all of your contact information out. Again, for those who are listening live or those who may come back and listen to a playback show, if they want to, you know, um, I don't know, collab with you, um, if they want to see you um, live, you know, for whatever reason they want to connect with you, the floor is yours to now go ahead and get all of your contact information out. All righty. You may Google Shanice Rachel. That'll get you everything. Um, I'm on all types of platforms, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, like all types of platforms. If you just put Shanice Rachel on, in, on the platform, if you search it, it'll come up. So just remember the name Shanice Rachel. Remember to Google me. Remember that hashtag Shanice Rachel. And um, you'll be able to keep up with me, follow me, and see all of my, you know, projects, my latest, my past, and my upcoming projects. All right. There you have it. I'm gonna, I just want to quickly say um, for those impatient people, um, for Instagram and Twitter, it's Shanice underscore Rachel. All right. Yep, Shanice Google underscore Rachel. Yeah, Google all the uh, – Google her. You'll be able to find, like she said, all of her contact information. Um, and not only uh, contacting her, make sure that you're downloading, streaming her music. Um, like I said, plug your phone in at night and just let it go. Yes, please, just <laughs> let it go. Um, it works. It really does. It works. So make sure that you're following the show on all social media platforms. That's Indie Fire, E-N-D-I-E-F-I-Y-A. Make sure you're following me, the girl in motion, on all social media platforms, D-R-L-N-M-O-T-I-O-N. We'll be back here next Tuesday, which starts off the month of July, or it's the second, but it still starts off the month of July, with uh, journalist, author, publisher, radio host, and a whole lot of other stuff. I'm talking about Patrice Rivers. She'll be here live with us on uh, next Tuesday. And then on next Thursday, it's the 4th of July. So I'm probably going to be a little more intoxicated than what I am right now. So we're not going to have a show on next Thursday. You know, typically we're not on the holidays anyway. Uh, so if you cannot uh, make next Tuesday's show, uh, we'll be back the following week. All right, Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So as always, I'm going to leave you with a quote. Music can name the unnameable and communicate the unknowable. That's Leonard Bernstein. Jimmy Slater, thank you so much for being here with us this evening. You could have been anywhere, um, but this <laughs> is the time and opportunity um, to be here with us. So we're thankful. Thank you for and having me. Appreciate all that you do. Uh, we will continue to support um, their brand as well as Art of King Music. We will continue to support um, all across the board. So, again, uh, make sure that you are uh, streaming, downloading Shanice Rachel, uh, all music platforms, King Da Vinci, all music platforms. Yeah. Google Art of King Music and find out all about uh, what's going on at that label. Cause they got a lot of shit going on. Um, yes, we do. Just, you know, just not the label, but, you know, the photography, um, a little modeling going on over there. So uh, if you're interested in the Philly area, you know, 
these are the people that you need yeah. to be in contact with. All right. So until right. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend, and I'll see you then tonight. Later.